We have a really packed presentation, so let's get started. Leveraging reports to unlock advisory for your client success. Next slide. Okay. When the app pack, when we were brainstorming and in the early stages of planning this webinar topic today around client success, we knew that it would have to sort of be a two-step process because in order to help your clients succeed, well, you, your firm kind of needs to know what's going on too. So because in order to help your clients, you need to know what's going on. So it isn't a chicken before the egg situation though, because We've all had that client that pushed us beyond our comfort zone where they were, had requirements that were outside of what we were normally used to. And you have to go and resource and change and add processes to accommodate. And guess what? Your firm has now grown and succeeded in that process as well. So we couldn't discuss one without the other. Luckily, we have two amazing speakers here today who have both unlocked the secret to succeeding for their firms and their clients. So... Let's find out who's with us today. See, you can see them on the camera, so it's not a secret. <laughs> All right, Ted Williamson here today is a president and CEO of Accountants 2.0. He's had many years of experience running businesses from contracting to technology. And Ted offers a strong vision for the future of business and of the business services industry. He has served as president of a bookkeeping and tax firm helping small businesses with compliance and account 2.0, serving new age accounting service providers with connected marketing technologies and matching them to forward thinking entrepreneurs. We also have the lovely Melissa Lanos on the call today. She is the founder of King Business Solutions and partner of KBS Accounting. Melissa has over 20 years of experience in this industry and 14 of those owning her own bookkeeping firm. She holds her CPB and PCP designations and is the vice chair for CPB Canada, allowing her to have a finger on the pulse of the bookkeeping industry here in Canada. Melissa is also a Zero ambassador, and if you haven't noticed, she enjoys speaking about anything bookkeeping. <laughs> Today on the back end of our webinar, I mentioned earlier, we've got Rachel from Financial Sense and Ryan from Pluto, as well as Sarah from WagePoint. They're all going to be assisting on the back end with moderation and logistics today. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to throw it off to Melissa. Let's um, tell us your secrets to unlocking your client's success. <laughs> For me, it's it's reporting. So it's making sure the clients know what they know. We know what is available in our apps and what we can pull reports of and what kind of graphs we can make, but the client doesn't know what they don't know. So the most important thing for me is unlocking the client's success by letting them know what's available. Some clients want more, some clients want less, but it, it is my job to make sure they know what is available to them. And the biggest thing for me, if anyone's come and seen me talk at CBB, is year end. So year end reporting packages are so important um, and it just helps them be able to grow that business, learn from last year, build on this year, and just keep moving and growing. Yep, getting that good financial picture set in stone and that year end is always so important for sure. Next up, Ted, do you want to let us know what your top secrets are for unlocking success within your firm? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> uh, we believe that uh, that through through uh, communication, collaboration, and uh, visibility, transparency, um, that's how we we be uh, how we um, become successful. Uh, first of all, with our team, with our clients, um, just in general. Uh, so, like uh, financial sense actually helps us do this in a lot of ways uh, allows us to communicate allows us to uh to collaborate with our clients um and with and with the staff um as you can see here um what we what we like to do is review the time and billing reports um understand human capital and and, and how it relates to our, our capacity which we'll kind of touch in later on um we make check checklists and with that uh, you can do templates that you can automate those checklists uh get that all in place um we we verify and review your client financial data, uh, as well as um, we always look at security and and how we protect our clients. 
um, for example, like if you're using subcontractors or something like that, you need to make sure that you're that you're being very, very secure. So yeah, all really good points. And I'm excited for each of you to get into the nitty-gritty of all of it and show us actually what it's how it's all done. So let's uh, pass it off, pass the baton off to Melissa. Um, she's going to go over uh, WagePoint demonstration and highlight the successful reporting and functionalities within WagePoint she uses with her clients. Yeah, so I'm just going to kind of go over a few of uh, my favorites. So there's a little bit on the screen here, but we're going to go from that to an actual demo so that we can actually take a look um, at uh, something real and able to use um, in a day-to-day. -day. So we do a lot of payroll um, at our firm, a lot, a lot. I have one person that works on it full time and then I'm just there when um, they need my help. So I don't do it all the time anymore, which is kind of nice, but uh, one of my staff members does. So there will be a question later if you can tell me who my my staff members are representing um, today because I've put in some uh, fun names. Um, so Melissa's Honey Farm is where we're going to start. We're going to start with some reports. So this is the opening page of WagePoint, as everyone knows. And when I go into reports, the place that I go for my company and for my clients is the reports library. In that reports library, there's two reports that I pull on a regular basis payroll by cycles, uh, as well as the deduction register. So depending on what the client has in their payroll will depend on how I use those reports. So I've pulled some um, details so that hopefully I can kind of show you how I use them the most. Uh, so this is the uh, payroll by cycle report. I use this a lot um, when I'm trying to do things that are more than just a period. Uh, when I'm doing deductions that are for a period, then I'm going to use the deductions register. So this is an export from the deductions register. So I have some clients that do RSPs and TFSAs, and they sometimes want to be able to pay that per pay period rather than per month. So I will pull this report for them. It tells them what employee got what deduction, if it's an employer portion or employee portion. And this is what they use to upload and do that payment or we use to do it for them. Um, this report is great. You can do it um, for multiple types of deductions. You can pick multiple within wage points so that you're not just pulling just the RSP line. You can pull RSP and TFSA at the same time. And then we use this report and save it uh, for the client. If, like me, they want to do it for the month, then I go into my payroll, um, sorry, my payroll by cycle report, and I do a bunch of stuff right within this report. So I'm pulling up and putting in a filter. And with that filter, I'm able to do things like vacation. So one of the things that I am very, um, if I can spell, very, very important to me and my clients is reconciliation. So we reconcile more things than we can name and spend a lot of time reconciling, but it's very important to me and to my clients that they know that the vacation payable on their zero or QBO file agrees to wage point. So this is a big one. If you're not entering it correctly in your journal entry and reviewing your journal entries or your accounts payable push from zero, you may, you may not be getting that um, balance to be correct. So this is the report we pull. We change it to vacation balance, and then we're able to see at the end of the month, this is the balances that should be. Oh. Sorry, guys. Something came in front of it. There we go. Um, this is the balances that we want on our balance sheet. So we also use this when we're doing your end. So we're making sure that it agrees to the balance sheet, and this is what we're giving the accountant as the backup for um, vacation. Then when we unfilter, we'll also do something for, we are talking about TFSAs and RSPs. So I'm just going to grab that one for a moment. So you can see we have a few different ones in here. So then we can pull it over. So I may just be doing for August to September. 
So I'm just going to delete those. And then I would pull and put in a total in there for um, upload to the banking platform. So kind of gives you a few things that we do within this um report you can filter basically by anything just like any other excel um, file so it's a great way to grab what you need um, all from one file the other thing that i love about reports and the abilities of wagepoint is wcb wsib all of those sorts of deductions being able to put that into the employee at the rate that you are the current year and then being able to just click a report and pull that out. So I'll pop into wage points so that you can see where I got that from. So it is the quarterly WSIB report. Um, and any of these reports, you do wanna click now and then you can start filtering however you want um, going forward. This file doesn't have WSIB, so I wasn't able to do it from this file but this is the report that comes. Then we use this to do our filing with WSIB or WCB, whichever one you are using currently. And then it reconciles to the statement. So we're going in and making sure that our statement agrees to what has been posted. Um, then one of my next favorite things, and I don't think that it gets used enough, so I wanted to make sure we took a look at it, was sharing reports. So sharing reports in WagePoint um, is something that we used to do out of other softwares by PDFing uh, PayStub, by PDFing the Receiver General report, putting a password on it, sending the email, sending another email with the password. But WagePoint has made this so easy because they've created this portal. So the employees have a portal they can log into and get their PayStub because who doesn't love having to pick five extra pay stubs and sending them to them again because they forgot and they're getting a mortgage and need a couple copies of their pay stubs. So now they can go in and do that themselves. Well, what better to then give your client a portal to go and grab reports that they want. So you can go in um, to share reports, add someone, and you get to pick as the administrator what you're sending them. So I chose not to send them invoices because they know um, they don't know what they're getting charged for this because I'm paying for it. Um, you may want to send everything, but here is what I agreed to send them. Um, and I feel like none of us ever try and see what the client gets to see. So I purposely went and made that available to everyone. So this is the what they would come into in their side of the share reports portal. And they're able to literally pick the pay stub. They're able to grab the T4s when the T4s are ready. And I did try and do T4s in this one, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> I did try because um, I wanted to be able to show it, but that's okay. So now we can go in there and we can print off uh, a PDF of one of the pay stubs. So I have lots of clients that they have um, elderly employees that don't have an email. My dad was one of those. Well, he doesn't have an email. He doesn't have a computer. He has a flip phone. So how are they going to get their pay stub? So we do have the ability to give the employer the pay stubs. They can print it off and put it in an envelope for them. But it's not us having to do it for them, which is great. Um, so you can download right from there. Uh, the other thing to note is that these don't stay in there forever. Maybe it'll go back. It does stay on this page. Um, it will stay for 60 days automatically. Otherwise, um, the administrator is gonna have to push it back to the client if they need it again. So just so that you're aware, they're not there forever. So if your client's asking you for something that was 90 days old, that's why. So I love this, this is great. Um, and the other great thing about wage point reports is T4s. Um, if anyone has not made it through a, t a tax season, a T4 season, T slip season yet, T4s and T4As out of uh, WagePoint are so easy, um, especially when you are reconciling your source deductions every month. I still do a quick check just to make sure everything is good um, from WagePoint to my CRA. But even if you're not, I haven't found a problem so far. So knock on wood, that just continues. Um, and then T4s are so easy. And some of our clients end up doing like a WSA tax 
um, adjustment on the last one. So we're able to make that adjustment. I have a couple that have IPPs. So once the um, IPP adjustment comes, we can just pop into that T4, hit edit, put in the registration number, the information from the IPP, and poof, we have an updated T4 ready to go for WagePoint to push or for me to push it um, for my client. Any other reports, Bianca, that you want to talk about? Did I hit them all? Um, no, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Kim in the chat, though, would like to see more details on how you pulled the RSP amounts per pay report. Um, uh, I might be able to pull a different report, but it'll give you the same idea. I pulled that out of my own pay, one of my own payrolls, so don't oh, really want to go into my own. <laughs> no, it's okay. She says she thinks she got. I, she thinks she got it. I yeah. guess the comment came so, in at the same time. So that deduction register. Then you're just going to pick. Um, oh, I did it in this one. So you're going to pick RSP, run report. It'll pop up on the screen, so you can use the screen. You can PDF it, print it, or CSV it. So I CSV'd mine. There we go. And it's just as easy as that. Awesome. Very, very helpful. <laughs> Kim says awesome too. You're so. welcome, Kim. <laughs> so many great reports. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, awesome. So I, you know, we can get back to some later if we have more time, but if you wanted to move on to mm -hmm. how you manage this in Pluto, that would be awesome as well. Absolutely. Of course, it's going to pick stuff, right? It's nice to be secure. <laughs> oh, what am I missing? There's a car in that one. Maybe? I think you're good. We'll get lucky. Or they're not. better than the CRA ones where they're fuzzy and you can't even see them. <laughs> that's, that's so true. <laughs> awesome. So. We're in Pluto. Um, I definitely don't use Pluto as much as I use WagePoint because, you know, WagePoint, pay, people love payroll. They don't love paying bills, but Pluto makes it so easy to pay our bills. Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to show uh, was in the payables. So we're gonna go into payables, pending payables. And I like to filter in this report. So if you go to the right here, you can uh, pick different filters. I usually go payment status because I wanna see who hasn't do, done what they're supposed to do? So in here I go equals and then scheduled. And then that pulls us a report. So we can see where they are in their statuses. You're able to then export and I usually export with filters so that I can then play around with it. So in here, we're able to see if it's manually entered or imported. So this is one of those really important things because we're able to import from our accounting softwares. There's a couple that import into Pluto, um, Zero and QBO. So if it's imported, we're not having to worry about getting it back into the accounting software because once it's paid, everything is done for us, which I love. Um, but if it is manually entered, so we've gone into Pluto instead of our accounting software, and we've entered something, or maybe we've imported. So one of my clients likes to pay 100 different coaches, um, and every time they are different, which is just so much fun. Um, so instead of entering every single vendor into our zero file, we actually do an import um, of an Excel file right into um, Pluto so that we can get that paid easily because all the information is in that Excel file. But then we need to know that they were manually entered so we can get them back in to um, our accounting software. So this is a great report. You can then do that same kind of filter that I did within um, the wage point report and figure out which ones are manual and which ones are um, imported. So that's a great way um, to see where you're at there. Then we also have what's scheduled. So I will use this report sometimes to send an email out to my clients that have forgotten to press the lovely button in their email to go and approve payments. So I use this report as my reminder. These are the things that we set up for you. Can you please go hit the button? Um, so this is one of those reports that we use on a regular basis. 
Um, the payable completed. Um, you can also go in there. Um, this is the one that I use a little bit more when I'm wanting to see um, what's imported in manual because it's already fully completed. So we'll have that other side of the banking transaction in our accounting software. So I usually am filtering here and doing the completed payments from um, there. Receivables. Um, I really enjoy um, receivables. We have a client that has 150 units in their apartment building and we have to collect rent for them. So Pluto has made this marvelously fun and exciting and easy in comparison to us manually entering the amount that they owe us for um, rent every month. So it's awesome. Um, and it is so easy. So this report, I usually filter um, with not equal to payment scheduled. And the reason that I usually do that, not equal to um, payment scheduled, is because I want to know if there's somebody I need to poke a little bit to make sure that their rent get paid. Maybe we're waiting on a PIN um, to be entered. Maybe they don't understand the email that they received about that PIN. So we do a little poke make a little phone call and make sure that that's getting moving. And this is a great report to be able to do that. We also can give this report to the on-site person who then goes and knocks on the doors and make sure we, we're getting things done. So great reports that help us help the client, which is so important because they don't realize they're not getting paid or why they're not getting paid. And maybe it's a pin issue. Maybe it's an email issue and the, and the person didn't get the email or it's sitting in their junk. So this way it gives us an ability to say, hey, I see the email was sent and you haven't opened it yet. Are you able to take a look at that? So this report is lovely for that. Um, and then there's also the bank racks. So I can't pull the report out of this one. I couldn't get it to work um, just because there wasn't any data and I couldn't figure out what date there was data. Um, so one of the Pluto people nicely got me a report um, to be able to see that. So one of the things that, like I said, reconciliations are the thing that I love the most as a bookkeeper to the penny is the best feeling ever. Like you can't, can't have it the same as saying that it's under materiality. I want it to reconcile to the penny. Um, so we pull this report out of Pluto that shows it'll come in two tabs normally. I've kind of made it so that it's on one sheet for us um, to be easily be able to see it. So one tab is gonna show transaction details uh, in detail. And the other one is going to show your bank transfers in total. So you'll see that the green lines on the top one have the same bank transfer ID as the one on the bottom that I have highlighted green. So we know that those things have cleared against each other and we're reconciled. So if you're not seeing that in your accounting details, then you can dig in because you know which ones are making that $250. Whenever these don't match, then I know that something's still in transit over month end. And being in transit is fine. It's just like us having outstanding checks back in the day. Um, so now we have an outstanding check sitting on our reconciliation, but I've been able to prove that using these bank reports. And I think Ryan's there, so maybe he can add anything that he might want. Hey, I was just off camera because it's one of those days where um, I'm just eating lunch now. But uh, um, I didn't have anything to add. Um, yeah, I think this was, it was great. And um, yeah, if anyone has questions on, on reporting or anything like that, um, don't hesitate to reach out and we'd love to take you through it. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thanks, Melissa. I'm going to switch up all the screen sharing again. Let me <laughs> rearrange all my browser tabs. Give me one second here. <laughs> Also, fun uh, fun fact, uh, you mentioned Pluto people. We call ourselves Plutonians um, internally. So if you ever want to say you talk to someone at Pluto, you can say you talk to a Plutonian. That's okay. Oh, I am so using that next week at CPB's conference. <laughs> Perfect. Um, awesome. All right. So let me rejig my whole screen again here. All right. 
So here we are. Um, we had a couple slides um, speaking to the Pluto demonstration. So um, everyone's going to get a copy of the slide deck. Plus, this is recorded and we are going to be sharing the recording. So don't worry about um, accessing any of these tools or resources. You'll have that all after the webinar. Um, and as Melissa demonstrated, we do have some instructions and some screenshots on these slides as well. So I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to touch on or I'd see you covered all this. So we'll skip over these. And next up, we have Ted. Ted, would you like to demonstrate how you use financial sense to increase the success of your, for your firm? I would love to. Thank you. Wonderful. I'll stop screen sharing okay. again and give you back control. Okay, let me jump in here. So um, when it comes to, like, like I was talking about before, we, we need to collaborate, communicate, and get visibility with our clients. Uh, financial Sense gives us the ability to do that with within uh, our accounting firm. Um, our clients love it. Uh, our staff love it. They, they're able to keep track of everything as they go. So I'm just, I just want to kind of show you a few, a few things. Um, stay tuned uh, for the, for, for the, for the next webinar, obviously, because you're going to get a lot more information uh, there as well. So, um, so let's look at workflow first. Um, that is the biggest thing that we have with financial sense is being able to track our work and keep everything in line. Um, so, so basically this is the workflow screen. You can see um, all, all of the different uh, projects that we have going. You can see that there's actually chat. You can jump into a chat, client tests, um, and, and you can track their due dates. And, and there's all kinds of filter filters that you can, you can use in order to figure out what works. I'm not going to get too crazy into this because this isn't really like a huge demo. We just want to see, show you what works, uh, what we, what we'd use. Um, so we go into the clients, the, the clients a lot. Uh, because when you go into the clients, uh, you actually, uh, um, you can see all of the projects for that client. You can see all of the documents, uh, tasks and notes. Um, you can even see, um, as you can see, go into an about section. So there's all of these abouts um, that you can find the information. So our team, uh, um, a lot of times if we're bringing on a new team, they can go to this about section and get a general idea of what's going on with the client or, or, or specifics about the client. Um, and then they can go in and jump into uh, notes and tasks and things like that to get a, a general understanding about that client. Uh, when it comes to the client as well, you can jump into the emails. You can see all, all of the communications um, through through email as well as activity, um, your communications with clients and internally for those clients. Uh, so th this, is, this is beautiful. Like as we we're saying that the communication is super important to us. And it's super important to clients as well. Uh, one of the things that one of the, the things that we get from our clients the most is that wow, you guys talk to us like within a day, sometimes within minutes or seconds, right? We get it, we get a chat from them right in right in the client portal, and we and we respond to it right away. And they can't believe that an accounting firm or bookkeeping firm is that responsive. So that's how awesome this program is. Uh, as you can see within the clients, you can you can jump right into the files, regardless of the of the actual project itself. There's a dump of the files so that you always have access to their files, um, even the ones that they upload themselves. As you can see, the client task files. So we ask the client to upload tasks or to upload files and complete tasks, uh, and when they do, it's all here. So if ever there's a question as to, you know what's been uploaded, a client's like, I didn't give you that or something like that. Yes, actually you did. Or or you didn't tell me, you didn't give me that. Well, we can go into the client task and we can say, yeah, actually here, here's a task where we actually uploaded a document and you checked off and said, you up, you, you downloaded this document. So, I mean, not that we want to, it's not, it's not us versus them, but we still have to make sure that, that, that uh, oh yeah melissa's not her head she knows we all know so <laughs> we'll, yeah <laughs> we will stop it right there before we start getting too crazy um and uh so so that is a, a super important part is the workflow understanding what's due uh who's doing it and and and, and who's it for um is super important 
And then in the clients, like we said, we have these client tasks and the clients have a portal. Um, so we can actually send them their, their portal link. They can have it at any time or when, whenever we send them a new task, they actually get an email that says, you have a task, please complete this task. Um, so let's talk about why or how this, not just the communication and collaboration, but some of that visibility and how we use financial sense to improve our own internal operations. So as you can see on the right side here, it, there's this QuickBooks Online link. What this is, 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 is it's an integration directly with QuickBooks Online. They are building it for zero as well. Uh, so that so stay tuned for that. Um, but with, with this, all the time that we record at, when we track time, uh, we record as billable or non-billable. We can import that directly into QuickBooks and bill them right from there with all the notes, everything, so that so that the client has full visibility and transparency as to what we've done. Um, and we can speak to it and about it with the client, um, you know, face to face or on a Zoom call, as as you know, we're all pretty tech friendly accountants. So usually there's Zoom calls. Um, and so another another very, very important thing that we use is we actually use uh, our time tracking reports. So we would go into for our own team, we would actually go in and grab our, you know, grab the last pay period. Um, there we go here. So let's say, let's say we're September, or this is our last pay period here. So we're going to apply that. And now we know what all the hours are. We, we can just open up wage point. Uh, somewhere else, you input those hours, uh, super, super simple, and pay them. It takes like two minutes to pay our staff. Um, so it's it's amazing. Um, as, as well as these time tracking reports are, are so they're good for, for our own internal payroll. Uh, but when you look at, you want to look at your profitability, you want to look at, you know, where, you know, how much time we're spending on clients or specific types of projects. So you can try to adjust your billing accordingly, or, or you can um, get an idea of, you know, if, if somebody's burning time, things like that. Um, sometimes somebody might accidentally leave a timer on and all of a sudden they've worked like 40 hours and in, in like two days and you're like, what's going on? So, but, uh, but aside from that, <laughs> they can easily go in and edit those. Uh, so, so these are the reports that we use a lot. And then the other, another really handy thing uh, is this capacity management tab here. There are so many things, as you can tell, and I, I use it a lot and I love financial sense. Um, but so I'm going to actually stop it here at the capacity management. Um, so that way we can, uh, we can talk about this further because there's so much involved. But I do want to just jump into one. So I want to I talk about George. So George, you can see in red here he is over his capacity so apparently he only has two hours available this week um and he has four hours scheduled um so if we jump in oops sorry um you can see what projects he's actually working on and then what's allocated towards that um you know the types of tasks that he's working on the expected hours and you can even see anybody else involved in a task which is really really cool um and then you can see not only the um that he's over capacity here. What's handy about this is first of all, you can you can find another employee who's under capacity and fill that gap. Um, but and then you can see, okay, so you know, George this month overall is under capacity. Well, what's going on? Okay, so he has, you know, so many all, all of these projects. We can look at them and say, oh, okay, never mind. These are all zero. <laughs> so we know that we can actually um that he might actually be over capacity. You can figure out all, the, all of this stuff on the go. Um, and then we can actually set the capacity for how many hours per week. As you can see, two hours per week, pretty low. George doesn't work much. So he's probably not a good employee, I guess. Um, anyway, so that is what we have financial sense. Uh, and I will speak to, we also use WagePoint and I, obviously, cause we already very tied in and we use Pluto. And these, this is an amazing little app pack group uh, that's that's go that we got going on here because these are very useful tools and you absolutely need to reach out to these people after the fact and at least get a demo and that is all i got so uh rachel i don't know if you have anything to input uh from the financial sense side um and if not maybe maybe Bianca yeah thank you so much Ted. i think you did absolute justice <laughs> So this, um, um, Ted, I was going to ask you one thing. You had mentioned yeah. earlier that you you export a report of the hours to actually upload into WagePoint, I think. 
Uh, okay. No, no. So, so we don't, we don't necessarily export. So we export it to Excel. Yeah. Um, so we export it to Excel. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but we just manually do it because we don't have like a million employees. Oh. So we just manually do it. We don't, we don't, we don't format it all and, and do get into all of that. If we had, you know, dozens or hundreds of employees, it'd be a different story because you'd, you'd have to format it, you know, based on, on the import features, right? That's right. Because in WagePoint, um, and if we do, if we do end up going back to uh, checking out anything in WagePoint, if people have questions, maybe Melissa can show us where there is actually a CSV um, import button for any time going into WagePoint. So it's it, it's actually a pretty seamless um, process if you were to do that. So yeah, it's fantastic. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'd love to open up the floor to any questions, or if anyone, any of the attendees today would like to um, view a certain feature or report or have clarity on any of the things that we've already discussed today, that would be awesome because we've got some experts here for you. Um, Charette has said, year-to-date earnings summary. Um, I'm assuming you mean that's in wage point, Charette? Just want some clarity there. <laughs> you could just add it in the chat. Maybe Melissa can, um, do you have the, uh, yes, please. Okay, so maybe Melissa can jump back into WagePoint and show that, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. If you have that available. Okay, so usually where I go is I will go to reports and then I will go to payroll history. So this one's not going to show a lot, but I did go pop into another file and change the names. So I will show you the export. So the payroll history, you can pick the months. Um, so maybe you're doing a report for an insurance company and they just need to know X amount of months. So you're able to actually just pull what you need for months here. Um, when you X, um, pull that into Excel, it's going to look something like this. And I already went and did some changes in there. So it's going to pull out a report that has your gross pay, your taxes withheld and all the information. Maybe you only need the gross pay for, um, Cookie Monster. So we're only going to show Cookie Monster on the report. And then you can then go in and grab that gross pay, um, amount and have a report just for them. You can delete, add, do all the things that you need to do, but this will give you that payroll history uh, report and it also will give you the net pay so you kind of have an idea of what their net pay is. Hopefully that's kind of what we were looking for. It looks like it. Yeah, that's great. And then if you just want to show where the um, import um, feature template is, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um... I don't do it very often, so oh, let's go on the top right. Yeah. And oh, okay, uh, should be, and then go to yeah, there you go. Hours, hours, actually, you can do yeah. hours and earnings, which is super yeah. um, awesome because you can do it with contractors as well. So yeah, I'm gonna throw them both in there. <laughs> so then when we go in here it should be I'm like I have one and it's now it's not here so it should be here now so then you can import your hours right there or yeah earnings. yeah and so you just upload the excel um some of us get it out of financial sense some of us are getting it out of um a different tracking time tracking app um and I believe 2.0 is going to have some kind of <laughs> magic that makes it even better so hopefully yeah. that is coming soon yeah no doubt and um and honestly like what i've heard from so many accounts and bookkeepers that um use it downloading that template and sending it off to their clients so that their clients can fill in the hours so you're not having to do that you know that reconciliation of hours and vetting all the employees hours and is the overtime right and all the things so um being able to get that template having your client fill it out so there's accountability on that side and then importing it into h makes it super seamless and and saves the bookkeeper accountant from hounding hounding their client for those hours and timesheets because that's not fun. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, Tara, he, I I use the the same report to pull my vacation payable for the year. Um, so I'm using the vacation balance. 
because every time we're entering the vacation accrual and when they have a vacation payout, it comes out of my vacation um, payable account on my balance sheet. So I actually use this um, report for that. Is there like, are you guys using anything different to pull a vacation report? The one I pull, but. So I'm using the payroll by cycles. And then filtering like you showed us earlier. You yeah. should just do a whole yeah. session on filtering reports in Excel because you're, <laughs> you're pretty good at that. That was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Hopefully we do, that helps, Tara. <laughs> we do have a few more questions that have popped up as well. Does the hours template calculate staff hours? Um, the hours, oh, on the import. Actually, I haven't even like looked at that very granularly on what it actually says, no. So the stat pay will calculate based on the average time I think four weeks, I want to say it pulls. Mm -hmm. um, so for some provinces, that probably works great. For some provinces, that does not work at all. <laughs> so it just really depends on um, how your client's doing it. Yeah, and wage point will calculate it based on previously imported or worked hours or paid hours. So um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, we have another question. Does wage point do some check printing report? Oh, a check printing report. So how people are paid, whether it be by direct deposit or. All my clients are by direct, direct deposit. <laughs> I've never even. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I know it's not often that people are paid by check, but there's, you know, there's always one every so often for sure. Like Melissa's dad. Yeah, like, well, he got direct deposit. He just didn't get his pay stub. Okay. <laughs> uh, too funny. <laughs> Ted, do you know? I, I've never tried to pull a report like that, so I. You can't know what? Say... Um, yeah, for our clients, we make them go on direct, direct debit. We, it makes no sense to do checks. Um, so. Yeah, you know what? I, I I guess you'd have to pull pull a report for the for payroll. Um, you can put them on where the, where the, where they they don't have direct deposit. Um, and if you just just uh, print out the report, you know, um, for 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 like their their, their net payroll report, yeah. um, you would be able to then pay it in Pluto. So you could pay a check. You check or Pluto will do checks for you. Uh, so you can actually pay it in Pluto. So. Oh, that's a good, that's a really good tip. Um, I do know that on the, the, once you've approved payroll and you have your payroll registry report, there is like on the very bottom, there's like a, a net pay withdrawal amount. And I feel like I've seen um, that amount doesn't include when there's check. It's only what wage point is going to be direct debiting from your account. So um, I feel like there's a line there, but again, I just, I don't see checks come across very often. So it's not something that's um, coming up to my brain either. So yeah, I don't think you can print checks there, but you can get that net amount so that you're, so, so you can give it to your client to print. That's right. Because as you can see on the right there, um, where it says pay, um, you can, it's like pay by direct deposit or check. You can turn that off, um, in the first step of pay, the pay run there. And, um, when you select, when you turn that off, that toggle off pay by direct deposit, then it ends up being, yeah, see net pay direct deposit. So that doesn't include manual payments that, that you've selected them not to direct deposit, so. But you still automate your deductions and, and your, your CRA payments, which is That's amazing, right? right? Everybody so. should do that. <laughs> yes, that is, that, that is uh, what sold me on WagePoint originally was, wow, I don't have to deal with all this anymore. You know, clients not doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, so so this is like simplified our relationship with our clients when it comes to payroll. So like it's it's night and day. And, and you know, I'll client that uh, anyway. I won't get into it, but <laughs> that, is a, that is a social discussion that we can have on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook accounting bookkeeping forums. Yeah, those are, those are fun. I like those. <laughs> So um, I do use this report on every single payroll that mm -hmm. the client wants to approve it before we hit approve. So we run the payroll, we pull this report, and this report goes to them for approval. So I do use this one a lot. Um, and some clients want to know what's going to come out of their bank account and what's going to their employees. 
So we use this report to give them those numbers. Ali just po posted a knowledge based article from WagePoint on handling the pay paychecks. So thank you so much, Ali. I've never been stumped like this. It's just no. not that comes up very often anymore. <laughs> we really no. appreciate that. So there you go. <laughs> Um, it's, you know, it is really important to note that though. So um, I, I appreciate the question. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any questions or would like to see any other demonstrations in the apps that we have today? No, no, no. Okay, cool. I will get back to sharing my screen and we will- There oh, is one more question there, Bianca. Is there a way to set up an hourly paid employee to have 3% RSP income and deductions without having to do it manually? Oh, we're gonna- 3% RSP income, like 3% of their gross income? Yeah, maybe Kim can clear. Is that what we're- their paycheck changes yeah. each time. Yes. So yeah, 3% of gross. Um, based on the deduction and the incomes that I set up, I did them as dollar amounts. I'm just going to pop in there. And I feel like if we want to do it as a percentage, wage point's going to have to set up a special one because I don't think there's an option for percentage. Uh, there, the RSP sure there is in the deductions area on which point you actually can do by percentage or by amount. I just don't know if it applies to the RSPs. I don't have it open in front of me. You know how you visually need <laughs> to see it. <laughs> I, have well, I'm, I have it open, so hold on. Let me share. Okay, perfect. Dollar or percent. Yep. Ta -da. <laughs> so in order to get that deduction to show up, you do have to go into the company and add the deduction type. So if you don't already have that deduction type of an RSP set up, you are going to have to put it in here so that it'll show up on the employee. Perfect. Does that help, Kim? <laughs> Uh, Jennifer also asked, uh, we do percentage for our team and it is based on growth. So yes, another confirmation. Yep. Excellent. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back. We do have a couple more slides and some exciting things to share. So I'll get back on that. Everyone can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right, next up in our App Pack monthly webinar. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. My buttons are clicking. The art of capacity management for your firm. And I know that Ted did a uh, segue a little bit into this conversation earlier. Uh, November 22nd, we're gonna have some industry experts on and we're gonna talk about optimizing your operations and resources and really understanding what capacity management means for your firm. And in the full context of full cycle bookkeeping, I mean, I think we're all very well aware that uh, your firm tasks, your client tasks, payroll, accounts receivable and payables, those are the, some of the bigger pieces of your, you know, accounting, full cycle accounting and bookkeeping pie. So they're really important to understand in capacity and making sure that everything is manageable within your firm. So don't miss that opportunity and make sure you register if one of my, my um, my assistants can help in the back end and drop that registration link in the chat. I can't see where it is. <laughs> Too many screens open. There. Oh, excellent. Okay. Uh, if you want more information on Pluto, we've got some information here. Schedule a demo, free 30-day trial, and get 10 free domestic transactions. There's also information here on how to get a 14-day trial with financial sense. Obviously, we have WagePoint here as well. Reach out to partner at wagepoint.com or sign up to become a WagePoint partner. And guess what? We have two new WagePoint products that we're, we're just in the launching right now. So we've got People by WagePoint, which is a light small business HR software. And we've got Time by WagePoint as well. So if you want any information on those, feel free to reach out to partner at wagepoint.com. 
Uh, the slide deck, you'll also see links in, in the slide deck if you want to click on those websites after. Uh, thank you for joining us. I, I also wanted to, we have an exciting announcement today, hot off the press, we actually, Wage uh, WagePoint announced that we have our third annual Wage Fest happening, which I'm super excited about because, uh, you know, who doesn't love a free unpayroll conference? <laughs> if anyone's going to make payroll fun, it's going to be WagePoint. So let's just be real. <laughs> Um, that's going to be October 26th and 27th. So uh, we'll send out some information to everybody. If you're interested um, at the end of the webinar, there's going to be a survey. If you want to find out more, please leave that feedback. If you want to be invited to WageFest, otherwise it's going to be all of our socials. And if you're already in our mailing list, you will get that information. So yeah, uh, let me check the chat here. we got some more things. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's a wrap. 